It's clicking. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, the number one business development and revenue-focused late-night show in the country where we're on a mission. And our mission is to empower. Our mission is to inspire. And our mission really is to provide you, that's right, you the entrepreneur, you the person that's a, a single mom or, or, or maybe you're someone that's, that's married or maybe you're someone that's worked all day long and you come home and you work on your business all evening. Our mission is to provide you with the resources that are necessary to execute that big, 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 big vision you have for the people you were called to serve. And yeah, I know you want to make some money, but you also subscribe to the school of thought that you can make a dollar and a difference at the same time. Isn't that so cool? So yes, you can be a happy entrepreneur and you can make this happen. So this morning or this evening or this afternoon, whatever time you're watching, wherever you are in the world, today we'll be talking to two folks. We're talking to the none and only Dr. Mark J. Sims, and we'll be talking to Mickey Royal. You don't want to miss this. But I'm going to start off first um, with Dr. Mark Sims. And I know I said his name, but some of you out there are watching saying, who in the LL Cool J is this Mark J. Sims? Like, who is he? So I'm going to ask him if he'll take a moment and tell you about his origin story. Um, it's taken from where he is to where he is now. What was the defining moment that got him to doing what he's doing now? So, Mark, welcome to the Happy Entrepreneur Show, man. Take it away. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you uh, bringing me on to your show. This is great. Thank you so much. Um, you know, the thing I would say is, is I'm a husband, a father, and then a doctor. So I do all of those things. Uh, in terms of my origin story, I am a uh, ear, nose, and throat doctor that just does ears. So all I take care of is ears. And uh, my real passion is hearing loss. Um, and so the, the origin of that is, is I am one of six kids, the youngest of five brothers. So my parents had a boy and then five girls. The middle brother was my brother, Robbie. He had a brain tumor when he was a teenager and he got radiation to that brain tumor. And then into his 20s, 30s, and 40s, he developed a progressive hearing loss. And frankly, it was a stress on our relationship, mine and his, the family relationship, his marriage. It, it just, it, it went throughout his whole life and caused difficulty. And uh, as I watched it take kind of take away his life in terms of hearing loss, um, and unfortunately, eventually he, he actually, uh, I lost him again to the actual complications from the tumor, but uh, I really realized how significant hearing loss was and how much it affected people. And that's really why I became so passionate about uh, treating hearing loss and making sure it's well treated. You, you know, if, if you can, uh, Dr. Sims, and we'll get into a little bit of the backstory a little more, but for those folks that are watching right now and they have to care for a loved one, um, yep. could be a parent, it could be uh, someone they know. It could be their child or it's just extended family. It's someone they love. Um, what words of encouragement would you share with them? When I say encouragement, uh, what's one or two things they can do to help them along the process? And that's an unfair question. I know it's loaded a lot of ways, but we're going to imagine they're caring for someone who has a hearing loss and they're dealing with it as it's progressively moving in stages. And they're just like, wow, what do you tell someone like me? Is listening right well, now. Well, I think the first thing is is don't get frustrated, but get explain to them how the hearing loss impacts your relationship. That's really what people care about is the connectivity, not just you can't hear, but how it affects you and that loved one on a day to day basis. And if you can do anything, I would say get it measured. In other words, know whether or not there is or isn't a hearing loss. Go get a comprehensive hearing test, and that'll really tell you what extent you're dealing with. I think those are probably the two things. I mean. <laughs> People have an extensive hearing loss way before they're treating it, but and I know family members and loved ones are frustrated. So tell them how it impacts you, them, and your relationship. That's what gets people motivated to do stuff. You know, Doc, along along this journey as you've been, and we're going to talk first to a few entrepreneurs that are out there, right? And they might think, well, Shay, he's a doctor. He's you know entrepreneurship. He's got patients coming to him at, at some point. This is easy peasy for him. But what would you say if you said, you know? Shay, you're going to ask me the question, what's one idea or what's principle, one principle of business that I would pass on to someone else that wants to build their business? Now, I get it that I specialize in hearing, but there are certain business principles. Uh, what's one business principle that you've learned along this journey that you've had that you would like to share with someone that's listening right now? Well, the, uh, probably the thing I've learned the most is health problems are marketing problems. 
if that makes sense, all right? Yeah. So yeah. the issue is fundamentally getting people aware of that problem is a marketing issue, right? And so people talk about public health, they talk about people knowing, but it's really, you know, the classic marketing things, right? Message, media, and uh, market, right? Targeting people correctly. And so getting the some lift or change in the world of hearing loss is using those things and using persuasion to basically, that's kind of my goal is to use business tactics to change the way hearing loss is treated. Um, and it's a, it's a little bit different than having a, you know, my, my original practice is predominantly surgical and now this is a medical problem. So it's a different approach to talk to people about a medical problem and get them to understand it, embrace it and know how to do it, which is the same as other things, right? You want to motivate somebody to utilize your product or services. You got to make them aware and move them through the funnel to get to the point where, you know, in business speak, it's a close for me. It's treatment. Yeah. How does, um, how do you, juggle so many priorities right like what's one of your strategies for you know they always say you can always make more money but you can't make more time and it's not about time management it's about time choices so my question is with so many different priorities competing for your time how do you really quote unquote manage time or or, or manage your schedule and choices you have to make throughout the day between your family <laughs> and your business and there's folks that are listening like wow do i have to give up my family um how does Dr. Sims do this? How does he juggle so many different priorities? Well, the first thing I would tell you is I've always been committed to family dinner. So I'm at home to dinner short of an emergency uh, for family dinner. We've always ate together. I have three children and a wife and we've always eaten together. And that's always been my priority. So I've actually designed my day around that. So if I have more work, I get up earlier and do more work. I think that's one of the things. Um, in terms of the stuff I want to get done outside of my clinical practice, uh, probably the biggest strategy is 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 looking at times where you can um, purchase efficiency rather than do it yourself. There are times where there's other expertise out there that it's worth your time is worth more than the time it'll take you to develop that expertise. So, for instance, there's a person in the direct marketing world who's done a lot of work in uh, hearing aids and hearing loss, and so I've actually engaged him as a consultant to kind of get there faster by using his ideas and what he learned in the direct marketing world to apply that to hearing loss. And I think so getting speed through other people. Now, the hard part is, is that's easy if you've got the right people. I mean, one of the things I would say, the hardest thing about getting other people to do stuff is kind of the due diligence of kind of, you know, sifting through uh, the people who just want to sell you services, but not really any substance um, as compared to the people who will sell you services with substance. And that, that takes a lot of effort kind of getting to know the, the world you're working in. Well, we'll get into hearing loss and why it matters. So I'm going to give you a, two minutes sure. to kind of chat about that it's in a very simplistic terms as you, as you possibly can. Um, but sure. you brought up something that's very important, which is how you sought after other folks. And, sure. and somebody listening uh, may be asking, wow, Shay, I'm curious, how does he decide one you know, who could be a mentor for him, even where he is now, because you never stop learning. If the question is asked, when do you right. stop learning? The obvious answer is you never. So two part question, number one, and he can handle this, ladies and gentlemen, he'll be fine. Well, number one, what type what characteristics does he look for in someone that's going to be maybe mentoring you and helping you along this path? But number two, and I think more importantly, what do you look for for someone else that's coming to you now and wanting to pull your time away from your family and some of the priorities you talked about to help be a mentor to them along this journey? So what are the characteristics you look for in both? Well, I think that the second question is people who are genuinely interested, right? You know, if somebody is going to show up and ask you questions, but they're not even going to have a paper and pen to write anything down or take it, they're just kind of taking your time, but not really taking what you're offering. So you want people, and I think passion. The other thing is I think it cuts both ways. I think the way to pick people is you can listen to them articulating kind of their own set of values and operating principles and people who have them will by and large articulate them as they're talking about the things they do. The ones who don't articulate them probably aren't the ones that I would match with because I'm looking for people who are operating on, have certain principles and values that they're using and that they're compatible with me, not just, I want to make money. Mm, good. I like that. So it's not about... Uh, making the money is about really the difference that they can make along the way, which makes a lot of sense. Uh, take a moment now, if we can, and hearing loss, that's the topic we had down sure. to share with and why it matters. And 
you know, for someone like me, I, I like in layman's terms the best you can and tell us, you know, why it matters and what is it. So folks are listening, understand it's not just I can't hear. It might be some other things. And the reason I say that is I have sinuses and I'm, I'm a runner. Right. So I got an allergy doctor who tells me if I want to keep running, I got to get these freaking shots, which I hate getting. And I hate taking the medicine, by the way. I'm one of those kind of folks. But then when I yeah. wake up in the morning and have all this drainage in my ear that throws my equilibrium off, he reminds me I've got to follow the instructions. So it's very important stuff. So take a moment, if you will. Hearing loss and why it's important. If you had two minutes to give us the who, what, when, where, and how, what would you say to the person that's listening? As you're listening right now, some of you I know, you're already going to Google and typing in Mark, Dr. Mark Sims. I know you're doing that right now. That's cool. But he's giving you his view of the world and why it matters. I'm going to ask you all to listen, you like that pun, with new ears and, and watch with new eyes as, as he explains. This is something that he does very, very seriously. Uh, he's one of the best at doing it, and we're blessed to have him here on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. So, Mark, tell us hearing why, why it really matters and why that's the topic you chose. So, you know, I mean, you know, I, I'll say, I, you know, I have a, a podcast, and one of the questions I ask every guest at the end is what's their favorite sound, right? And so people will talk about, you know, uh, the wind going through leaves, uh, in a tree or waves crashing on the ocean. And so the simplest thing is think whatever your favorite sound is and imagine if that no longer was part of your life. I mean, that that's the pleasure of hearing. It creates relationships, connectivity. Um, you know, it's the way we interact with each other. Um, you know, uh, one of the things that's interesting is, you know, really, uh, you know, people, Helen Keller, you know, I'm paraphrasing her, but she said, you know, blindness, blindness robs us of uh, things and uh, hearing loss robs us of relationships. And I think that's very true. It's the connectivity with people that matters. It's, the, it's, this wouldn't exist. You and I talking to each other today wouldn't exist if, if hearing wasn't part of it. And it's uh, independence. You can take care of yourself if you can hear. And if all of those, any of this thing, if it's compromised, those things start to get compromised in your life. Hmm. Said so well. One of the, one of our favorite segments as we're coming down the home stretch, and this is one of the core missions of the Happy Entrepreneur Show is that today is my January first, right? And it's one of our mantras. And those folks who know I'm about to do, you can look below the video, look below the video, and you can write those words. Today is my January first. And for those folks that are hearing, <laughs> I like saying that now for the very first time, today is my January first represents a do over. It represents a fresh start. It means that our past no longer equals our future and my question really to uh, Dr. Sims is um, what is maybe one time along this journey of life where things didn't work out for you where you had a setback and you had to kind of bounce back from that and what was the lesson that you learned so you mind and maybe you never had any problems maybe life's just been perfect for you we, we don't know no, but we no, all no. want to all listen like gosh has he ever had a challenge that didn't work out and what was the lesson he learned so today is your January 1st and we're going to find sure. a January 1st moment with the one and only Dr. Mark Sims as well so what I would say is is, is um, being uh, interested or more prioritizing skill over alignment so having gone through multiple team members that had skill, but really weren't aligned with what we were doing. And uh, the skill fades and because the lack of alignment plays itself out. And that's a, you know, it's really, I think, finding talent of people who are aligned with you and you can train to the skill is much more, makes much more sense than trying to find people of skill and then realign them. I think it's pretty hard to align people to your values who aren't fundamentally already aligned. Mm, said so well. Um, second and last question as we're coming down the home stretch. Thanks sure. for so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. I want to get a shout out to the one and only Linda Clements, uh, who's certainly a collaborator. Uh, one of our 12 rules for life, by the way, is that collaboration crushes competition. We've got 12 rules for life, but one right. of them is collaboration crushes competition. Uh, take a moment and talk about the power of collaboration and why that's important, not only in your feel because it's got to be very important to feel you talked about that at least three or four or five times um but also important in life in general well i mean i think uh you know obviously having other people around you who can support you you know i think in my desire to expand the reach of well-treated hearing loss um you know uh, i you know medicine is almost its own mastermind where people are collaborating and stuff but i've gone uh, and started participating on the business side of masterminding because you can see 
uh, how uh, people approach problems. And actually, you know, one of the big things that I've really learned is everybody says their business is different, but they really aren't. The problems are all the same. And so there are some people who have some really great creative ways to solve problems that can be applicable in my world that they're bringing using in a different world. And I think getting ideas and different ways to approach things and your way is certainly not always right, if ever right. And so uh, I'm really open to hearing how other people solve things and really bringing that expertise into the field that I'm trying to make a difference in. Hmm. I love it, man. I really love it. That said so well, and I keep saying it says so well, but it's so true and you're short and direct to the point. I love it. Uh, one of the questions we ask almost every episode is one of my favorite questions. Of course, they're all my favorite questions. We wouldn't ask these questions. For you that's home right now, one of the things you can do before I ask the questions, you can hit the share button. Um, we believe in the giver's economy. The person that outgives the competition outearns the competition. The person that outgives the competition outearns the competition. So it doesn't matter what platform you're watching on right now, or some of you are listening to the podcast, you can't hit the forward button. I understand that. But some of you are watching right now, and you're watching around on one of the platforms, hit the share button. Just hit the share button. And when you hit the share button, just write these words, serve plus add value. That's exactly what Dr. Sims is doing. It's exactly what Mickey uh, Royal is going to do. He's coming up shortly as well. And pay it forward. Even if the message is not for you, you can help someone else along this journey. Um, one of the questions that I love to ask, uh, Dr. Sims, is of all the mentors you had on this journey of life, and you've had so many mentors on this journey of life, um, what is one lesson you learned from any of your mentors, just one lesson that you want to pass along to us, the audience? And we may never meet your mentor, obviously. We may never know your mentor's name, but we get the benefit from what he's taught you or she has taught you. Let me be clear. He or she has taught you that you can pass on to us. So please share. Well, you know, one of the sayings is, is, is uh, surgery is a contact sport, meaning there are times where it doesn't go the way you want it to. And, and I had uh, early in my training, I had a, a, a unfavorable outcome. And I remember my mentor, he knew um, it was an issue for me. And he took me aside and said, look, it's not the bad things that happen to you. It's how you choose to respond to it. And I think that that really is. It's whether or not you, I mean, I know it's cliche, but you get back up on that horse and continue to ride and try over and over again. Because, uh, you know, it's only through those failures do you really learn, not through the successes. And, and uh, that's really uh, taken me a long way. And I really actually appreciate, as I reflect on it throughout my life, his willingness to take the time to provide that mentorship was incredibly valuable to me. Well, you know, you mentioned earlier, thank you for sharing. I certainly appreciate that. And um, that's true. You mentioned that you have a podcast. Now, I, I know we're getting to the last question coming up shortly where you're going to share. And the audience loves it. It's like one of their favorite parts, right? They love to hear uh, your message to help empower, inspire them as out there. But you mentioned you had a podcast. So you can't right. leave the audience hanging, right? They've got to know, Shay, what is the name of his podcast? What's the mission of his podcast? And uh, so please share it with us. Well, Shay, I mean, the other thing is the book is Listen Up Hearing, right? So that's my book, Listen Up Hearing. It's a physician's guide to effectively treating your hearing loss. And uh, not that it's a novel name, but the name of the podcast is Listen Up Hearing. So it features uh, medical leaders and other leaders about uh, healthcare uh, hearing. It's basically exploring whatever topics. One of the topics I'm going kind of deep in right now is uh, dementia and Alzheimer's and memory. Um, but it's all sorts of stuff, uh, people talking about different things, w ways they develop research or process or problem solving, or just people talking about good things that happen in their lives, all sorts of stuff. Ah, and what's the name of the podcast again? Listen Up Hearing. Listen Up Hearing. Ladies and gentlemen, you heard it. Listen Up Hearing. I love the hearing part. Okay, so um, let me once again say, uh, Dr. Mark Sims, we certainly appreciate you being here. So start it off Thanks by saying we know you can always make more money. That you can make but you can't make more time. And you've given us the most precious resource you have that's your time, so, so thank you for being here. Uh, I wanna thank share you. it over you to have your, your final thoughts or comments um, for folks that are listening right now, maybe to encourage them and inspire them as you leave out of here. And we're looking forward to, one, tune into the podcast, listen up hearing. Before he gives his closing comments, don't worry, he's gonna share with you how to contact him. He's gonna share with you how to contact him. I know y'all Googled it, okay? Y'all say, Shay, we can find him. No, he has his own preferred method. So he's gonna tell you how you can best contact with him and stay in this conversation over and beyond the time that we have here. So again, Dr. Mark Sims, thanks a lot. It's a pleasure to meet you through Thank the power of these fiber optic lines. Uh, and I'll turn it over to you, man. Well, Shay, I, actually, I wanna ask you, what's your favorite sound? 
my favorite sound is jazz. I like jazz music. But if so you said sound, that's is that music or is it just sound? Yeah, that's sound is music. But my point is, is think about that. That really says it all, right? How much pleasure and what place that takes you and how that's like something that makes you feel great or fulfilled or whole or joy. And that's what hearing's all about, man. It's about, you know, being connected and having that pleasure in life. I mean, it's it's, you know, it's like uh uh, you know, the difference between black and white and color vision, right? I mean, it's just, it brings everything so big and better. And so that's why hearing loss is so important and uh, why I'm passionate about it. Well, first again, thanks a lot. We appreciate you being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show, man. Looking forward to connecting and maybe one day having eye to eye contact and having a chance to there sit down, go. okay? <laughs> thanks yes. a lot. And thank you thanks. again, Linda. Bye bye. God bless. Bye. Next coming up, we have the one and only, the man himself, the myth. He's been in the waiting room, in the green room. He's smiling, got the big smile on his face. None other than Mickey Royal. Mickey Royal, mic check, mic check. Can you hear me? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Well, I can hear you loud and clear, man. Thanks a lot for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We certainly appreciate it. Um, for those folks that are just meeting Mickey for the very first time, Mickey Royal, and yes, they can go out there, they can Google, they can find you. But take a minute or two and just tell us a little about who is Mickey Royal. <laughs> I love this. And um, what's his journey been like to get him to where he is today? Okay, who is Mickey Royal? He's an author of the book, The Pimp Game Instructional Guide, along with uh, several other books I've authored, uh, stories, novels, things like that. Now, who was Mickey Royal? A former gangster, drug dealer, mob enforcer, pimp and pornographer of over 500 adult films. Uh, my book, The Pimp Game Instructional Guide, is currently being used by the FBI as a textbook for to new agents to get into the minds of human trafficking and um, all kind of the entire sex world and the sex trade industry, so to speak. I've been on numerous shows and podcasts and lectures, series talking about it from beginning to end because mostly they're working off a Hollywood narrative, which is incorrect. So it's like you're looking for gold, but you're digging in the wrong place because you have the wrong map. So it's kind of who I am, who I was, what I do, what I did. Man, you know, I, I love that. And you talk about the mind and the mindset. Take a moment, and if you can, for those folks that are listening. We have entrepreneurs that are listening on here. We have some folks that go to work every day, kind human beings. They pay their taxes, doing great things in this world. And they're like, wow. Okay, Shay, this is really interesting. What is Mickey's whole belief just around mindset and belief systems? And I know you talk about getting into the mind on the one side, but just the question is, when it comes to mindset and belief systems, um, how do you really control that? And how do you shift that in the right direction? What do you mean by the right direction? Well, the right direction is whatever the right direction is. When I say the right direction, I've got a mindset that maybe I can't do something, so i got to shift it to believe that I can do something. Or I might believe that I'm one person over here, but really I don't believe I can be another type of person over here, so I've got to change my mindset or change my perspective. And I guess the question is, what helps drive that? What helps shift someone's mindset or belief system so they can pivot from one thing to another thing, which you've been able to do very, very successfully with multiple careers and multiple areas and writing books and everything else? Well... Everything's kind of been the same. Mm. It's just me. You know, it's it's like saying, uh, how do you go from making a Big Mac to making fries? Well, I'm a cook. So it's not like I went from one to the other. I just did one dish and another dish and another dish, sometimes all on the same plate, sometimes individually, but it's the same restaurant. So it, it wasn't really a transference. It's just being able to express oneself honestly completely. Mm, I love that analogy, man. That's spot on. Um, take a moment, if you can. You talk about human trafficking. It's a very, very important subject. Uh, take a moment and, and, and talk about why that's so important to you as well, to make sure that the folks understand what's really happening and, and how to get into the mindset to make a change in that one particular area. What do you mean? Um, as a person who was involved in it, uh, as a person now that's helping the FBI agents kind of understand what's really going on and not just buy into, as you said, the TV narrative, but be able to understand what's going on so they can do something about it. Is that correct? Yeah, well, human trafficking and pimping is two different things. I remember a, a guy once said to me that if he knew his daughter 
if it, if a pimp came to see his daughter, he would kill him. And I said, no, you wouldn't. And he said, yes, I would. I said, no, you wouldn't because you wouldn't recognize him. I said, oh, you think he's going to show up to your door with a crushed velvet hat on and a Cadillac? No, that's not what he looks like. He's going to have on a sweater, going to look like Carlton Banks. He'll be slightly one, one in a year, half, one and a half years, or maybe two years older than your daughter. I said, he's going to be very mannerable, very respectful. He's going to find out everything about you. So if you're, a, let's say, a Chicago Bulls fan, he'll show up with the two courtside tickets the first day. He's going to be totally interested in what you do. You're going to say, have my daughter back at 10 o'clock. He's going to have her back at 930. And uh, he's going to gain your trust. And he'll be sitting at your dinner table in no time. And half the days he'll request that you chaperone on. And slowly, by sh sure, slowly and surely, he's going to start getting her to defy certain things that you want her to do. But in the most sinister way, you know, small things. My father doesn't like me to uh, eat fatty foods. Well, you know, what's a cheeseburger going to hurt? And it starts small. And he's going to be wise beyond his years. You're going to think, wow, he's really ahead of, ahead of the curve. He really has this, that, and the other. And, I, and it's not the fact that he's so smart. What you don't know is that your daughter's 18, he's 20, but his hand is being orchestrated by a veteran who's about 45 or 50 years old who can't get into her house, but he can get into his head, which can get into her house, which can get her out of the house, which back to where he wants her. And in about six to eight weeks, you probably won't hear from her again until she's in a psychiatrist's office 10 years later with PTSD. And you're not looking for Iceberg Slim. You're looking for Eddie Haskell from Leave it to Beaver. He's going to be, he's going to know a little bit too much for his age. He's going to be quite charming, but in a mischievous, sinister way, slightly. And he's going to use the frog technique. It's how you cook frogs. You don't throw them in a pot. A frog can walk on water. So if you throw him in an open pot, he'll just leap out of it. You throw them in room temperature water. You let them sit there. You let, get, let them get comfortable. And then you crank up the heat ever so slightly. You wait till their bodies adjust to that. When their bodies get uncomfortable at first, they, get, they start to adjust to that. And you slowly turn it up. Before you know it, the frog has been cooked to death. And he can easily leap out of the pot at one time. But he doesn't leap out of the pot. He allows himself to be cooked to death because you adjusted it to his comfort level. So, in other words, it hurts so good. And pretty much that's what you're looking for. And a lot of times they go off the Hollywood narrative and they think it's a crew of guys in a band snatching. Yeah, that's cute for movies, but that's really not true. That's not how it's done. Yeah, if you're going to go off a movie, it's more so done like Taken. It'll be a familiar stranger, someone kind, someone nice, someone overly helpful with nothing to gain as it seems as it appears on the surface. But it, it's, it's a slow walk, and then it's a grab. So that's what I would say. You know, as you're saying that, you got me nervous over here. Um, you like describing the perfect gentleman, and I don't think I've ever heard it said this way. This is like, um, well, let me, let me ask a question. This is good. I mean, this is like, you're, I mean, it's like, whoa, you gotta watch this, you gotta be careful. For, for parents that are watching, uh, are listening right now, they're like, whoa, uh, I thought I had the perfect person that was visiting. Uh, sounds like a good guy. Uh, has some of the symptoms you talked about. That means it's a good thing or a bad thing. It just is what it is. If, if, a, if a parent or a loved one or someone that cares about someone suspect that this is happening uh, now, um, what would you say? What words of advice would you give them? Uh, what guidance would you give them? Like, I think this is going on. I think this is happening, but I'm not sure. This guy's, as you said, because um, he doesn't look like a pimp. Seems like a nice guy. But there's a lot of things that are happening that I, I, it feels weird. Um, any words of advice that you would give to any parents that are listening right now or any guardians or caregivers, caregivers that are listening right now and are saying, wow, what would I do if I, I had a young lady happening? one time whose uh, son, her, his best friend, was involved in criminal activities. And I said, don't be afraid to hurt his feelings. Don't be afraid to betray his trust. Go through his things. He'll thank you later. Go through his things. Uh, listen in on phone call. Overhear things. And if you have to put your foot down, put your foot down if you can, if they're that age. If they're at an age where they can be independent, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, it's going to be a little bit more difficult. And you're going to have to pull them back the way they were pulled away. You cannot have a hard line approach. 
because them wanting their independence and them wanting to stand up and be themselves or be quote unquote grown, they will snatch away and rebel from you just out of spite and for the sake of being grown. Sometimes when they're in between adulthood and teenage years, their attitude is I'd rather fail as a young adult than succeed as an old child because they're in a transitional period. And that's what makes it so sinister because it's innate and it's natural. It's unnaturally natural because you're changing now. So I would tell parents the same way they're sliding them away, you slide them back. You point out certain things and make them see it through logic. You know, well, if he really cared about you, why is he hunting the horn? Or things like that. You know, I mean, you have to point it out and be subtle if they're that age. If they're younger, I say the hard line approach. The same way I would take with my children. I love that, man. I, I love how you, the analogy is just, is, I love it. Um, as you also talk a lot, and I love what you talked about on the trafficking part or the pimp part, and I love that, and I love the mindset and how you talk about seeing it, understanding it, and then being able to address it. Uh, take a moment, if you can, and uh, talk about what's your big why these days. I mean, you could do a lot of, th- a lot of things with your time right now, but you're what out uh, – what is your big why? What is your big why? Why does Mickey do what he's doing now? He can do so many things with his time, but yet he's out with sharing this message, helping and make a difference. I guess the question is, what's, what is Mickey Royal's big why? Balance. Ooh. Tell us about that, please. I owe a debt. I have to pay it. I uh, lived a lot of life. I've done a lot of things. Uh, I've done things I can't mention, you know, and uh, there has to be balance. Imbalance is insanity. And in order to make it all make sense, I have to pay it forward. I can't go back to yesterday. But tomorrow can be a little different, you know, and that's just what drives me, balance. And I have to give the truth as I've lived it and I and the truth as I know it, because no one's getting the truth because you're hearing from people who've never done it. That you, you're getting from people who compile a bunch of television shows or a bunch of movies or a bunch of quotes or a bunch of rap songs, and they put together this narrative, and it's incorrect. It's all make-believe. They've never actually done it. You know, I have the record and the bullet holes in my body and, and the stitches in my face to prove it. And I did this for 27 years, you know, so, and there was no day job. It was no part time. I mean, from age 13 to 41, this is who I was. So I can tell you where all the traps are because I set them. So what drives me is balance. Like I said, I owe. And uh, there was a lot of collateral damage involved along the way. Not all bad and this, that, and the other. And I don't mind the focus damage. You know, you, you don't mind the focus damage because it's a reason for it. You, you said focus damage. Take a moment and define what is focus damage, if you mind. Uh, on purpose. Ah, okay. Thank you. I have just a point of clarification. No, that, that doesn't bother you uh-huh. because it made logical sense when you were doing it. It, made logical, it makes logical sense now. But there's, there's not so much for every action as a reaction because that implies equal. But I believe in like that six degree of separation thing. One thing affects so many people, and it's the so many part that you owe. Not the one person. They may have had a debt and you collected it. But it's the so many part that keeps you up at night because they didn't sign up for this. So that's what you have to make it right. And I figure right and wrong is an opinion. It depends what's right. Is it right to shoot these three people? Well, if you're in Vietnam and they have a gun pointed at you, I think it's right. So is it right to shoot them at Walmart while they're in line? No. See, right or wrong depends on the situation. So I don't go into right and wrong, but the people who did not sign up for this should not have been affected. And there's no way one thing affects one person solely and individually. It affects so many others, and that's the ones you owe. So balance is is what moves me to write and I have to be truthful about things so when I write my novels I have to visit an ugly place that I don't live anymore and that's the hard part so once I put everything 
in books, I have to take a break. You know, it's, it's like people ask you about PTSD. They always concentrate, concentrate on the T. Traumatic. Post stress. That's not the traumatic. Most yeah, traumatic. I had, I had to count right. it for a second. Traumatic, yes. Yeah, the most important thing is the post. The post? While you're in Iraq shooting, you're not thinking about anything but the moment. The shooting, you don't have traumatic, it's, no thing, it's not traumatic stress disorder. You don't freak out while you're doing it. So people say, how did you do all this? I say, easily. I say, it's called post. It's when it stops and you tr- go into the transition and you're leaving one frame of thought and going into a new frame of thought. And when you focus, uh, totally get into your new frame of thought, you're looking back having that, what have I done moment? Did I really do that? But you're not thinking about it while you're doing it. It's easy as drinking a glass of water. It becomes natural. It becomes not what you do, but who you are. But when you have transitioned into someone else, that's when the PTSD comes. That's when the guilt comes. That's when the shame comes. So it's after the fact, but mm. not during. You know, you uh, one of the questions I, I asked earlier, and it's one of my favorite questions to ask of the guests, which is um, of all the mentors, well, before I get to that question, one of our um, missions, one of our golden rules is that collaboration crushes competition, that collaboration crushes competition. Uh, take a moment and talk about just the power of collaboration, working together and working with others to solve problems. Because some of these folks, as you mentioned, that even if I'm a parent, I may not be able to do it by myself, but maybe I can collaborate and work with other folks. So I guess the question is, um, tell us a little about the power of collaboration and working together to help solve problems versus trying to do it by yourself. Well, I go off the narrative that no one knows everything, but everyone knows something. So that means everyone knows everything. So it's always great to collaborate because it's like being in the boxing ring. I'm the one in the ring. I'm the one fighting. Then why do I have a trainer instructing me outside the ring? He's not in the ring. He's not fighting. He's not getting hit. Then what is he telling me? He's not teaching me how to box during the fight. Then why am I paying him so much and why is he there? Because he has an angle and he sees things that I cannot see. That's why sometimes a fighter may think he's winning the fight. And the trainer's like, no, you're not winning the fight. You lost the last four rounds. You have two rounds left. You're behind on the cards. You need a knockout. That's not what he sees in the ring. He thinks he's doing well. The trainer's like, no, you're not. Or he might say, the guy's setting you up for an uppercut. Lean back. Stop leaning forward when you throw such and such, because when you're in the moment, you can't see that. So collaborating gives you a panoramic view and a view from many different angles, which gives you many different perspectives. So it's like the many doors of one. It's like five rooms making up one house. And each one of them has a has a function. A bedroom doesn't operate as a bathroom and a bathroom doesn't operate as a kitchen. But you need all three. Mm, I love it, man. As we're coming down the home stretch, one of the person that connected us together was the one and only Linda Clements, who's certainly a collaborator as well. She's always uh, introducing and sharing great folks who are doing some amazing things. And you're certainly one of them with a heart to give and a heart to serve and a heart to really make a difference. Yeah, you write the books. I get it. Yes, you're sharing the message. I get it. But at the end of the day, uh, for my view of the world, you're serving and helping folks see something that um, even myself, as you were explaining it and going through it, and I had a chance to go through the bio and see some cool stuff my team pulled together. But I'm like, whoa, this this makes sense. For you that's home right now, uh, the number one takeaway as well is that you can affect change. You can be the change, and you can make a difference. It's This thing is real. Uh, take a moment, if you would, Mickey Royal, and the one question I'd like to ask all the guests um, is that of all the mentors that you've had along this journey of life, and you had so many mentors, I know, at different stages of your life, um, what is one lesson that you may have learned from any of your mentors that you can pass along to us that may help us along this journey of life as well? And I know you have so many mentors, but just one idea. We may never meet your mentor, but the lesson that that person taught you is now passed on to us as well. You don't regret as much in life that you do that you regret that you don't do. Say yes more often. Time ticks one way and uh, death is permanent. It's not good. It's not bad. So that's the point of view. It's permanent. 
So use your time wisely the way you want to do it at that particular moment, at that particular time. And I talk about time a lot. I've lost quite a bit of it inside some of the sterling institutions of this nation and well as Mexico and Sao Paulo, Brazil. Uh, yeah, I've been in places, uh, institutions all over the world. Wow. I did a lot of stuff and sometimes I wasn't successful at it and I had to go away, but it is what it is. I'm here. A lot of scars, but I'm here. But say yes. You know, it's like I used to tell my son, uh, he, he had this thing about cheese. He only ate dishes with cheese. It could be a cheeseburger, it could be a cheese enchilada, but if there's no cheese in it, he wouldn't eat it. And we were having sushi one time, and he was like, ugh, ugh I don't want to eat that. He was really young. And I said, try it, son. Always try it. I didn't say swallow it. I said bite it and chew it because you can always spit it out in your napkin. But bite it because you never know. And once you bite it, whether you like it or you don't like it, you have closure and you'll be able to go on to the next meal. You never have to wonder what might have been. I said, so if you don't like it, I'll walk right across the street and get you your favorite cheeseburger. <laughs> but what if you do? And he bit it, and I only had five pieces. And he bit it, and he was like, um, um, now I have another, he was about six years old. He said, can I have another? I said, oh, see, now you like it. And after you get two more, I had to get up and get him his own. But yeah, I said, you can always spit it out in your napkin. You can all, when you say yes to everything, it's easier to say no later and just quit. Then if you say no, and then try to turn that no into a yes later, that window of opportunity is closed. And that has served me well in life and not so well in life. It, it, you take it and go, but I've always said yes, no matter if I was interested or not. You want to, yes. You want to go to my birthday party? Yes. Because if I don't like it, I can leave. But if I say no, and I'll change my mind later, there's no invitation available. Well, just say yes. You don't like it, turn around and leave. But right. if you say no. You're not getting in, even though you've turned that into a yes later. So that's what I. Man, so many words of wisdom. I, I wish we had so much, so much more time. I wish we had more time, I should say, to continue on. But these are definitely words of wisdom that you, the listener, you that's watching at home, hit the share button. Pay this message forward. We believe in the giver's economy. The person out gives the competition, out earns the competition. You can hit the share button. And someone can hear this message, see what's going on, and know how to adapt or know how to react and know how to say yes and try something. So say yes and hit the share button and pay it forward. As we close out with the final question, uh, Mickey Royal, thank you so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We really appreciate it. Take a moment, if you would, and I always like to ask folks, what are your closing thoughts? Um, the folks that are watching now, um, that are up and they're awake or they listen to the replay right now, and they're like, wow, what words would Mickey World give me to help empower me and to inspire me as I go on in this journey? Uh, What's your words of wisdom? Again, thanks so much for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. We really appreciate it. Don't sweat the small stuff. It's not important. And love something. You know, I was a narcissistic sadist for 27 years. And certain events in my life transformed me into an empath. And what I thought was important back then, when I got older, it wasn't. And what I thought wasn't important back then, when I got older, it was more important than anything on the planet. So enjoy your time. Enjoy each other. And if you can't do a kind act, say a kind word and try and leave this place just a little better than it was when you found it. Well said, my friend. Thank you so much again for being on the Happy Entrepreneur Show. Thank you, Linda, Linda Clemens, uh, for introducing us. Uh, and thank you for watching. You, the viewer, you, the entrepreneur, you, the speaker, you, the author, you, the coach, you, the person that gets up every day and is the backbone of, at least in, if you're watching, in these United States of America, the business owner, we appreciate you. Thanks for paying the message forward. And remember this. You've got what it takes. You've got greatness inside you. And for you, the best is still yet to come. The best is yet to come. The best for you is yet to come. With that being said, my name, by the way, for those folks that care, is Shea Brown, the happy entrepreneur. Make it a great day, everyone. And I promise you from the bottom of my heart, we'll make some good things happen. We connect again next time. God bless, and we wish you success. Thanks a lot, Mickey. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye. Good night.